This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So we said at the end of the last video that the chapter, the standard, is all about crunching the numbers. So what better way to go through there and understand the standard in more detail is to crunch the numbers. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to go through and do is we're going to work the example that we have in the notes. I, I appreciate that you're looking at me going, Chris, you've missed out a big chunk of the notes. Don't worry. I know that it's there. We will come back to it. But I think the best way to go through and, and to work the example is to, to play with the numbers and then come back and, and talk through each of those separate scenarios of whereby there's a change to the equity share capital due to an either an issue of shares at full price, bonus issue, or a rights issue. Okay, instead of just talking all about it before and then doing the example, I think it's better to go through there and merge them. So what you've got there, if you look at the requirement, it wants us to work out your basic EPS. Uh, and for part A, it's nice and straightforward, assuming there that there's been no change in share capital. Okay, so we can do that pretty straightforwardly. So if we're looking there, is it at part A? It says Ruth makes up its account to the 31st of June each year. Uh, and the 1st of July, 20x5. So again, get your date right. That's at the start of the year, isn't it? Uh, we had 500 million ordinary shares in issue. Uh, profits for the year. So you're earning for $250 million. So a nice easy one to start off with there. Your earnings per share are there as your 250 million divided by 500 million shares, which gives me there is it 0.5 dollars per share. So is that 50 cents per share? Okay, there we go. Hotel, motel, dollars per share or cents per share. Okay, nice and straightforward. Everybody happy with, with that? Nice, easy start, isn't it? Okay. Uh, what we've got now, however, uh, if we go through there and have a look at part B. Uh, in part B, uh, there's a 50 million issue of shares. Okay. Uh, and they were at full market price. And that took place on the 1st of August 20x5. Okay. So we initially had 500 million shares in issue at the start of the year, at the 1st of July. So for the whole of July, there was just 500 million ordinary shares. But once we then get to the 1st of August, one month into the year, we then have an additional 50 million. So we'd have had 550 million. Now, what we've got to go through and consider there is that with your full price issue, we're just going to do a normal weighted average calculation. So weighted based upon the number of months. Because when we're going through there and looking at your number of shares in issue, that number of shares in issue has changed because we have raised equity finance at full market price. And that issue of shares will generate the cash that will then be used to improve the profits. Okay, so for the, the final 11 months, there will be higher profits than what there were within the original first month of the year. So what we're going to have to go through and do is to work out the earnings per share. We're going to take, is it the $250 million earnings. So assume that that hasn't changed, but it will have been impacted by the, the new issue of shares. And then we then need to divide that. by the weighted average number of shares. So for that, you're going to require a working. And it's a very standardized, is it there, four column working. So I always think it's important 
put in the dates. Number of shares. The number of months. And then the final column, your weighted average. So what we did is we started off, was it with 500 million? We then added another 50. So we then ended up with 550 million, wasn't it? Get the dates. I think, joking aside, this is the hardest bit to get. It's very difficult to work it through. So we've got the 1st of July. Is it the X5? So the 1st of August, X5, which is one month. Okay. Just be careful. When you're calculating the number of months in the exam, that you don't go July, August and put two months in. Okay, it's one month. All we do is we then take the number of shares, multiply it by the number of months to work out a weighted average. So that goes through there, I think, and gives me, is it 42 million? So 500 divided by 12, 41.667, 42 to you and I. And then what you've got then is it from the 1st of August, X5, to the 30th of June, X6. Okay. Use your fingers. August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Okay. Just double check. I know there's 12 months in a year. I know if we've got one already, then you, you, you're down to 11. But it's always good to have a double check because if you have actually gone into two months in the first scenario or the first period of the year and then put in 11 months, you've done something wrong because 11 plus 2 is 13. There's only 12 months. So do, do just be very careful. Uh, so 550 divided by 12 multiplied by 11. Gives me there. Is it 500? And 4 million. So when you total that up, it gives me 546 million. So if I take my 250 million, divide it by the 546 million weighted average number of shares, does that give me there? Is it? Bum, bum, bum. 24250 divided by 546 is that the 45.8 cents per share. Okay. There we go. We usually see these figures at the one decimal place. Okay. 45.8 cents per share. There we go. So the key thing to go through there and take is that whenever you have a full price issue uh, then what we're going to go through and see there is that there is a normal weighted average number of shares calculation uh, based upon the number of months okay excellent uh, part c that you have there says that we have a one for four bonus issue of shares uh, occurring on the 1st of November 20x5. Okay. Uh, so, what we've got to be careful of there is that when you have a bonus issue, okay, so the bonus issue here ties into part C, is that when you're looking at your bonus issue, there is no cash that is received. So if there's no cash, there will therefore be no impact on the profits. So what's going to happen is that in your earnings per share calculation for this year, the earnings aren't going to have changed due to the issue of shares. But the number of shares in the denominator within our fraction will have increased. So if nothing has happened in terms of changes on the top, but there's been a big increase in the number of shares due to the free issue of shares, then your earnings per share is going to fall, isn't it? Okay, 
Yeah, no impact on the, the earnings figure on the top. But there's been a big impact in the number of shares that have been issued. That has increased. An increased number of shares on the bottom is going to reduce the overall earnings per share figure, isn't it? However, that's not giving us a, a, a good like for like comparison, is it? Okay. So what we're going to go through and do is if we're comparing to, to last year's EPS, there's going to be a dramatic fall. So what we're going to go through and do there is we're going to restate the comparatives. Okay. So we're going to adjust the comparative amount and we're going to assume that the bonus shares have always been an issue. So even though in this instance here, uh, the issue took place on the 1st of November 20x5. We're not too concerned when the bonus issue took place. We're going to assume that it took place right at the very, very start of the year. Okay, Because It doesn't matter when it takes place, does it? Because if it took place one month into the year, 10 months into the year, there's still going to be no impact on profit whatsoever, is there? So therefore, we'll just assume and pretend that this issue of shares has always been in place. Okay. So what we've got there, if we go through and look at, is it part C? Part C is we're looking at my EPS. So again, you've got, is it $250 million? Uh, the number of shares that we're going to have. So was it a one before bonus issue? So if that's the case, the old shares that we had were 500. The new that are issued is at the 500 divided by 4, which gives me 125. Which gives me 625. Okay. So whether those shares were issued at the start of the year, whether they were issued at the end of the year, it doesn't matter, does it? There's not going to be any impact on that earnings figure of 250 million. So we're just going to work out the number of shares and that are in issue at the end of the year and assume that they've been in place right the way throughout the year. And if you do, is it 250 divided by 625? Does that go through there and work out at 40 cents per share? You would then need to go through and restate the comparative. Uh, we're not given any comparative figure. Okay. Now, the final bit that we have on our basic EPS calculation is going through there. And looking at part D. Okay. Uh, part D is that you have another issue of shares. A1 for 5. But in part C it was a bonus issue. So there was no cash. Whereby for a right issue it was the for cash. Okay. But with a right issue what you see is that the issue price is below that of the market price. So what you've got here is the market price is $1.40. Uh, you then go through and have, is it, the issue price is at $1.25. So what you have effectively is that a right issue it is sort of like a hybrid version of the full price issue and the bonus issue because it, it sits somewhere between, doesn't it? Now, we, we do have cash that's been received so there will be a weighted average calculation for the number of the shares but we're going to have to go through there and make an adjustment for the fact that there is a, a free element of the shares okay so what we're going to have to go through and do there is we're going to have to work out a, a right issue fraction to account for the free element of shares okay uh, because you know, you're selling them here, or issuing them, I should say, for $1.25. You should be issuing them for, for $1.40. So, so what element of that are you giving away for nothing? 
Okay, effectively what, what discount that you're giving on that share issue. So what we've got, the final part, is it there, part D? Possibly the hardest bit that you're likely to go through and see. So there, my earnings per share takes my $250 million and divides it by my weighted average number of shares. So I'm going to need working. Uh, the working is very similar to what we saw before, but we just add in an additional column. So we still start off with the date. We still start off with the number of shares. We still have the number of months. And then what we do now is we throw in an additional column which is this right tissue fraction, which helps us take account of the free element of the shares. And then we have, is it our weighted average? Okay. So as it stands, uh, what we have there, is it on the 1st of July X5, we had in place 500 million shares. And they were in issue up to the 1st of February, X6. Okay. So is it there July, August, September, October, November, December, January? Stop there at seven months. Because if you go into the next month, you're making a mistake. Okay. The shares were issued at the start of February. So we're effectively looking to what happens to the end of January. Then from the end of February X6 to the end of June X6. Again, this is your, your double checking, isn't it? February, March, April, May, June. Okay, so you have the, is it five months? Uh, it was a one for five, wasn't it? So does that give me 600? Because effectively what we've done there is we've done the 500 divided by 5. So there's 100 million extra shares, aren't there? Okay, so 500 plus 100 gives me 600. Okay. Uh, now what we need to go through and do there is we now need to work out this bonus fraction. The bonus fraction is applied to the shares that were in issue before the rights issue took place. Because once the rights issue has taken place, some of those shares that have been issued have been issued at a discount. So therefore, there is a free element of shares that have been issued. So there is no need to account for any of the, the free issue of shares after the rights issue has taken place. It's only before the rights issue that we need to go through there and do the calculations. So here, again, we're going to go through and do another working. So underneath... My answer there. So we're going to go through and look at your right issue fraction. Okay. Uh, so what we go through and do there on your fraction, you work it out as the price before divided by the price after. Okay. And that price after is commonly referred to as the theoretical X right price. Okay. Uh, so, so what have we got there? Well, if we look at the price before, we know that was there, was it, as $1.40. So that's nice and easy, isn't it? The theoretical X right price is the challenge, okay? Uh, because we're looking there at what is going to happen to the share price theoretically. Uh, so it might not be exactly the same as this in reality, but theoretically, if you had five shares in there at one dollar forty, if you had another share in there at one dollar twenty-five, you now have six shares. So the theoretical X right price. The price after 
is what's the value of those six shares now you've added in this little one at a discount okay so all you need to do is just average out the overall price of those shares over the six shares that are in issue so what you've got there effectively is for your theoretical x right price you have five originally is it there at one dollar forty and you now have one at one dollar twenty five okay so is that the seventh was the total price of the shares that were previously an issue i then put one in at one dollar twenty five so the total worth is eight dollars twenty five there are six shares in issue so if i do the eight twenty five divided by the six gives me one point three seven five dollars per share okay to you and i that's going to be is it 1.38 okay uh, so that's the price afterwards okay so what we go through and do now is we will go through and take that figure that fraction and include it now within our weighted average calculation okay we're just trying to adjust the number of shares that were an issue previously for the fact that there was a free element of shares within the when we did the right issue that free elements won't have impacted the profits so we therefore need to adjust the number of shares that were previously an issue to take account of that free element of them so what you can do now is you can multiply across so 500 times 7 divided by 12 times by 1.4 divided by 1.38 does that give me again rounding to 296 million and then is it there 250 million uh, adding them together Gives me 546 million. So my EPS, you take the 250 million, you divide it by the 546, and does that give you 45.8 cents per share? there we go excellent now that is really challenging that's really really difficult so what i think you need to go through and do there is to work the question again make sure you're happy with it i'm sure you'll be happy with part b and part c part d is the challenge so i would recommend that once you've worked that part d again uh that you go through there and then practice the examples that are in the study text uh, of your chosen tuition provider because there'll be some good examples there about calculating your basic EPS and then once you're happy with your basic EPS I then come back to to the videos and we can start then thinking uh, about some diluted EPS okay so I'll see you all a little bit later once you've done a little bit of work yourself enjoy <laughs>